Number 79, calculate the number of grams of HI that are at equilibrium with 1.25 moles of H2 and 63.5 grams of iodine at 448 uh, degrees Celsius. Okie dokie. So looks like they gave me an equation here, so I'm just going to rewrite it a little bit bigger. So we have H2 plus I2 is coming to equilibrium with 2HI. I already see a coefficient, so I'm going to assume that this is balanced, and this is a balanced equation. Now, the thing that they didn't tell me were the states of this, so there should be states here. In order for this to work, I'm just going to assume that all three of these are gases. Just makes it easier, and we're going to use all of these in our KC expression. Now, let's just write out what they gave us. Well, they said that we started off with 1.25 moles of H2. So I have H2 right here. I have 1.25 moles. And maybe I'll move this over a little bit. Ooh. There we go. They told us that we're starting off with 63.5 grams of iodine. So that's this. 63.5 grams of iodine, which is I2. And... We need to find out the number of grams of HI. Now, we just have to read in between the lines, guys. Are these initial concentrations are at equilibrium? Well, they said calculate the number of grams that are at equilibrium with this. So it seems to me that these are already equilibrium values. Equilibrium. Now, if they're already at equilibrium, I don't need to write an ice table. So I can bypass that step. The question is asking for what's the number of grams of HI? So I'm just going to write down over here that we just want to find out the grams of this. So they gave us a Kc value. Let's use that general equation to find out our specific one here. And that's this, right? The Kc just equals concentration of products divided by reactants. Only aqueous and gases are allowed, but we already said that all of them are going to be gases, so I don't have to worry about that. Let's just write out the general equation. So Kc equals concentration of products. We have one product, which is Hi, and we get rid of that, and it has to be raised to the coefficient. There was a 2 here, so I have to square that. Coming down to the reactants, there's two of them. I have H2. That I have to raise to the first because there was no number in front of here. So that means that there's just one of them. You can raise it to the first, but you don't have to. And then it's going to be times by I2. And that's also going to be raised to the first. There was no number, so that's a 1. Okay, so they gave me the KC, 50.2. And... Remember, these are concentration values. So they gave me a mole here, but I have to get it into molarity. Remember, molarity is going to be moles divided by liters. So we know the mole value for this, but if we read it again, the question, they didn't tell me any liter value. Now, generally, they should tell you a liter, but if they don't, we have to assume that this is one liter. Or you could just say 1L. If that's the case, the moles are going to equal the molarity. So molarity will equal the number of moles, since we're assuming that it's 1 liter. So in this case now, I have 1.25 capital M, and that's the number I'm going to plug in here, 1.25. But now here I have a gram value. Uh-oh. Well, we know how to go from grams to moles. That's way far back. That's like chem 1, right? We go from grams to moles by just doing the molar mass. Now, if you wanted to do, you know, dimensional analysis, you can. I'll just quickly do that. So 63, 63.5 grams of I2. Or maybe, you know what? We're not, in, we're not in that, so we could do the quick-hand version, right? 
just know that, you know, if you want to go from grams of I2 to moles of I2, all you got to do is just divide by the molar mass. And the molar mass is the number that's found on the periodic table. So I'm going to take 63.5 and I'm going to divide by, I got to go on the periodic table. I have two iodines, so that's 126.9 times 2. So I have to divide by 253.8. So 63.5 divided by 253.8. I'll cut it off at 3 sig figs. So this would e basically be equal to 0 0.250, and that's the moles. And then remember, since the moles equal the molarity, the number is going to be the same. So this would be 0.25 molarity, and that's the number that goes here. And we want to solve for HI, so I'm going to label this as X. So let's see. 50.2 equals concentration of X squared. times by the 1.25 times the 0 0.25. Maybe I'll add the 0 here. Okie dokie. So cross multiplication. So I get x squared equals those three things multiplied by each other, 1.25 times 0.25 times 50.2. I won't really round here yet. 68.75. Okie dokie. 68.75. And let's do square root of that because we want to get x by itself, so we have to square root. And now since we have the x value, I can cut it off to three sig figs. So 3.96. And remember, that's molarity. So now this is molarity, 3.96 molarity. And remember, we said that moles equals molarity, or molarity equals moles. So right now we know for the HI, which we labeled as X, was 3.96 moles. So all we have to do now is just go from moles to grams. Well, and maybe I'll say this is moles of HI. So how do we go from moles of HI to grams of HI? Well, that's now timesing by the molar mass. Remember, if we started with grams and we went to moles, we have to divide by the molar mass. Here, we're doing the opposite, so we just times by the molar mass. So periodic table's out. I have one H and one I, so 126.9 plus 1.008. I have to times it by 127.908, and that would be the final answer. So 3.96 times 127.908, I can round to three sig figs, and maybe maybe I'll put the answer right here. So I get 507, because it's 506.5, so 507 grams of HI. Okay. So thank you so much for viewing the video. I really hope this helped. Let me know in the comments. Subscribe to the channel if you want to help us out. And I hope you guys are doing great out there. Stay safe and stay healthy. And let's keep rocking and rolling. All right. And I believe in you guys. Good luck on your tests and quizzes. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.